Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Launching with LinkedIn with our Walden Career Planning and Development. We thank you for joining us tonight. And before I hand it over to our presenters, Dina Berggren and Denise Pranke, I would like to review some instructions for navigating and participating in this session. Before I hand things over to our presenters, I want to review some instructions for navigating and participating in the session. Audio is muted and video sharing is not available for participants. Feel free to resize or move any of the session content tools around your screen. Next, enter your questions for the presenters in the Ask Questions section, and we will share your questions as time allows. If you have specific questions, please schedule a career advising appointment. The attendee chat is also available throughout this session. Access the paperclip icon for a PDF of the presentation and download links and resources from the related content section. If any of the tool windows disappear during the session, you may access the toolbar at the bottom of your screen to open it again. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and is available on demand through the same link you used to register for the session. Click complete the webinar survey to provide feedback. Now I'll turn things over to our presenters. Thank you, August, and hello, everyone. I'm Dina Berggren, Manager of Walden's Career Planning and Development Department. And joining me here today is also Denise Pranke, who is our Specialist Career Advisor. Hello, everyone. We are absolutely thrilled to be here with all of you today. And Denise and I, we work with many students and alumni who come to us for advice on how to create or enhance their LinkedIn profile, find new opportunities using LinkedIn, and build meaningful networking connections. And this is why we are offering this program today on launching with LinkedIn. So whether you're new to LinkedIn or an advanced LinkedIn user, we hope that this program will provide you with additional tips on how to take your LinkedIn activities to that next level. We asked everyone who registered for today's program to let us know their greatest LinkedIn challenge. And according to the results, we found that the number one challenge was creating or updating your LinkedIn profile, followed by building a professional network and then interacting with individuals and groups and last, but definitely not least, finding jobs and researching companies. In this session, we will address all of these topics and much more. We also included resources in your ON24 content module that we will reference throughout the program. And we will also pause several times throughout the program for questions. So feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A box. We will address questions with the widest applicability to our audience. But before we dive into our topic, let's briefly go over some general information about career planning and development. For those of you who are new to our department, our mission is to support students and alumni in developing workplace skills to thrive as professionals and as social change agents in organizations and in communities. Our department is part of the Office of Student Affairs at Walden, and we are here to support you during the pursuit of your Walden degree and beyond. Although we are focusing specifically on LinkedIn today, we would also like you to know that we have a multitude of resources and offerings available on our website to help you manage your career. And we strongly encourage you to visit our website at careercenter.waldenu.edu after the session to learn more about our offerings. And now let's go on to our, our agenda. During the session, we are going to cover why you should consider using LinkedIn, how to define your purpose on LinkedIn, ways to develop a branded LinkedIn profile and strategies for engaging on LinkedIn. Now, August will help us launch a poll so we can learn more about your familiarity with LinkedIn.
All right, everybody, don't be shy. Take a look here at the poll question and submit your answer, and we will see the results. Wonderful. It looks like results are coming in, August. That's great. We'll just give it a few more seconds to make sure everyone had a chance to complete the poll. There we go. Good job, everybody. We're almost there, almost to 100%. Awesome. Now, let's take a look at our results. And it looks like 43% of you, which is the most here, said, I have a LinkedIn account, but I do not use it. But very closely behind with, I'm an active LinkedIn user. Thank you all for participating. Yes, wonderful. Thank you, August, and thank you everyone who participated in the poll. Um, this is so exciting to see that we have many active LinkedIn users uh, with a more advanced LinkedIn skills. And we also have um, some of you who are new to LinkedIn, which is excellent. Um, whether you're an advanced LinkedIn user or, or not, you, you will have many great tips here during the program that we will share with you. And if you are an advanced user, please also feel free to share your insights into the chat as we move through the program because we can all learn from each other. And for those of you who are new to LinkedIn, let's start by exploring what exactly is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an online professional networking tool that allows you to connect globally with other professionals, join groups, share ideas and information, follow companies, search for jobs, and be found by others, including recruiters who are seeking talent. In comparing LinkedIn to other social media sites, LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman once said that Facebook is like the barbecue you have in your backyard, while LinkedIn is the office. So think of LinkedIn as 100% professional networking. It's not the place to share vacation or family photos. Next, let's take a look at a few interesting statistics that describe the reach of LinkedIn. According to recent data, LinkedIn has reached over 1 billion members in over 200 countries and regions. And 67 plus million companies and over 133,000 schools, including Walden University, have a LinkedIn account. Also, over 90% of recruiters use LinkedIn to search for talent and to vet candidates. And recent data from JobScan has this number at 94%. LinkedIn is also one of the most popular job search sites and it has millions of job postings. So of course, these statistics are definitely very impressive. But how can LinkedIn make a difference to your career? Here are a few major reasons why LinkedIn can provide value to you as a growing or as an emerging professional. Using LinkedIn, you can establish your online presence by highlighting your skills and your expertise. It also allows you to stay in touch with current and former colleagues, classmates, and peers to connect and share your expertise with others and identify experts and thought leaders in your industry gain new insights and ideas, explore new opportunities and trends in your field, research companies and jobs, and a lot more. And experts in career development say that approximately 70 to 80% of jobs are found through networking. So LinkedIn is an ex excellent tool to help you build and maintain a strong professional network throughout your entire career. And for those of you who do not have a LinkedIn account yet, 
setting up an account is very easy. Simply go to linkedin.com and start setting up a free account using your email address. But before you create your account, there are several very important considerations to keep in mind. First, consider your purpose for being on LinkedIn. As a Walden student, you may be looking to apply your degree to advance in your current career or transition into a new field. Maybe you'd like to start a small business or find consulting work or share your research interests with others. Do you want to use LinkedIn to help you find a new job? Or are you mainly, mainly going to use it to stay connected to colleagues? You may also have multiple reasons for being on LinkedIn. Next, think about how you want to be perceived on your LinkedIn profile. Now, many of us have multiple roles or hats that we wear. Reflect on your different roles or aspects of your brand that best highlight your strengths and how you can add value to others. You will also want to communicate these roles on your LinkedIn profile. And on this slide, we have listed a few roles to get you started, like writer and researcher and leader, subject matter expert in your field, go-to person for technology, a social change agent, and others that you see here. And now I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Denise to lead us through the LinkedIn profile. Great. Thanks, Dina. So next, we're going to go over each of the main sections of the profile, so including your professional photo and background image, <clears throat> your headline, the about section, your professional and volunteer experience, as well and your education, and other sections such as licenses and certification, skills and recommendations. On the next slide, you'll see a copy of mine and Dina's LinkedIn background, headshot and headline. Uh, my background is a photo of the Mississippi River near the Walden offices in Minneapolis. <clears throat> and Dina uses an abstract image for her background. Uh, LinkedIn has a few uh, background options that you can choose from, or you can uh, add your own image as we did here. To upload a background image, just click on the pencil icon for editing. You can use the pencil icons throughout your profile to easily edit any of your profile sections. For your headshot, use a professional looking photo, dress professionally, avoid Saturday evening or party type of attire, and be the only person in the photo. Um, if for security reasons you don't want a photo of yourself on social media, uh, you could upload an image or icon that symbolizes your profession. If you're currently looking for a new position, LinkedIn has the option of including a frame around your photo that states you are open to work. But be careful when using this option if you don't want your current employer to know that you're looking. And then next to your name, you can include pronouns and just below your name is your headline. Uh, my headline of career specialist and educator connecting students and alumni to resources and strategies for career success is focused on my mission, where as Dina's headline is focused on her multiple roles of manager, content strategist, presenter, and career coach. It's important to use a headline that will accurately describe who you are as a professional. Um, this is how recruiters can find you if you're looking if they're looking for a specific talent um, and you want to be found. So next, here are a few more examples of branded headlines. So your LinkedIn headline is worth spending some time crafting because it's the information people will see um, when they uh, search for you. You'll come up in listings, group discussions, and home feeds. Um, for example, when you appear in search results, your name, location, and headline are the three visible pieces of information that show up. So again, include keywords that someone might use to find you. You have up to 220 characters to create your headline 
If you don't customize your headline, it'll automatically default to your current job title. So next, let's go over the About section. So this section is similar to the summary section on your resume, but it can be longer and you can use personal pronouns such as I, me, and my to personalize it. Uh, also use keywords unique to your industry and um, share your academic and professional skills. Incorporate your values and passions and include up to three or four recent accomplishments. Um, LinkedIn allows you to use up to 2,600 characters uh, for this section. So take advantage of this opportunity to, to describe who you are as a professional and um, what you're studying or studied during your academic program. Also, rather than one long paragraph, break it up into short, easy to read paragraphs. Um, LinkedIn also allows you to add a list of skills to this uh, section. To add skills, just click on the pencil icon and then scroll down and you'll see the add skill button and go ahead and, and add um, at least uh, five skills. So next, let's go over the experience section. So in general, go back about 10 to 15 years, include your title, the organization and dates of employment. Uh, you can use some of the um, skill accomplishment statements, the skill and accomplishment statements from your uh, resume in this section, or you could write a short paragraph that describes what you did or what you're uh, currently doing in a, in a position. You can also add presentations and other rich media, such as videos, PDFs, or PowerPoints, and a link to a blog or a professional website to make your experience section more robust. And I also want to add, be sure that your job titles, employers, and dates on your LinkedIn profile align with your resume. If you're applying for a job using your resume, there's a good chance that the um, potential employer will also look at your LinkedIn profile and uh, they'll notice if there are any major discrepancies. So just make sure that they're uh, aligned. And then next, if you've made contributions to your community through volunteer work, add a volunteering section. So on this slide, we see examples of volunteer contributions that include scholarship judge and mock interview coach. Um, we know that many Walden students and alumni are actively involved in their communities and in Walden's social change mission. So if you have a volunteer experience, definitely add, add it to this section. And then next, let's go over the education section. Here you want to include all of your degrees along with the institutions you attended and include any major academic or uh, research projects, honor societies, recognitions, and specific courses that you've taken. And then next you can also add a section for licenses and certifications that you've earned. Um, here we see uh, an example of certifications earned related to adult education and coaching. And then the next, add a skills and endorsements uh, section. And so LinkedIn allows you to highlight your industry knowledge, technologies, and interpersonal skills. Um, you want to list at least five key skills that are relevant to your field here. Um, your connections can then endorse you for those skills. And if you're transitioning to a new field or industry, or you've increased your uh, current job uh, or responsibilities at your current job, um, don't forget to update your skills in this section. And then next, consider asking others for recommendations. Uh, recommendations can help provide confirmation and insights into your areas of expertise. Uh, determine who you'd like to ask for a recommendation, uh, choose people who know you well professionally and then go to the recommendation section and click on the plus symbol and then select ask for recommendation. Um, be sure to customize the message with your request and remember to send uh, a thank you message after they complete the recommendation. Um, so let's uh, next let's pause for some questions about the profile. So August do we have any questions yet? 
Um, we do have one question that is related to writing um, your summary. Okay, um, great. And this person is asking, how do you format a summary that focuses on multiple roles? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, you have the 2,600 characters that you can use. So LinkedIn gives you quite, you know, you've got quite a bit of space in that summary. So what I would suggest if you have multiple roles like Dina was talking about is to maybe in bold, put some sub categories, like, you know, maybe you do consulting work. So you might have consulting and then maybe you have an, another full-time position or you're an adjunct teaching, uh, uh, instructor, you know, any, any, you know, whatever those multiple roles would be, you could just put a little header and that would help guide the reader, reader through it. Um, Dina, do you have any other ideas? Yeah, I, I think, you know, just thinking back at those multiple roles and adding them into the header, like, mm -hmm. for instance, if you're a trainer, if you're an IT, T specialist, maybe you're a people leader, maybe you're a mentor, you can include all of those in the header so that mm -hmm. you have more of a holistic brand that you are highlighting. And I also just want to add, there's an, another question that I'm seeing about, um, you know, uh, the about section as well, right? And mm -hmm. uh, with, with the about section, you can edit the, your about section, which is your summary. It doesn't have a lot of um, features where you can add bullets or formatting, but the about section really should be in, in paragraph form. So there was a question about how to mm -hmm. add bold and bullets to the summary or about mm -hmm. section, but, mm -hmm. but really it's, it's kind of simple in LinkedIn, but all of the features um, in a particular section, if you click on that pencil icon, you can see the different fields for that section and what features are available for formatting. Yeah, great. And I, I would be sure, you know, if you have multiple roles that you want to highlight is chunk them into separate paragraphs so you don't have one long, huge paragraph. And that may be in bold you'd have just a descriptor for each one of those paragraphs related to those roles that Dina mentioned. That's so great. a great a tip. Any other, any other questions before we move on? There's it looks like you, um, a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the most recent question we have is if you have a diverse professional background, which skills should be highlighted? Um, I think, you know, that would go back to what Dina talked about, you know, what is your purpose for being on LinkedIn? And that might be your guide in terms of what to put in your headline. Um, but you can have multiple roles in that headline as as well. But, you know, think about your, your purpose and, and you can always edit it. Maybe you're in a job search for a specific job. So you go in and you might want to edit that headline to be more focused on your current job search. And then you can always go back and change it. You know, it's not fixed. Um, so kind of, I would say, think about your think about your purpose, and then you know, craft your headline. And then in the in the summary section, whatever would be most important to you, put first. You know, maybe use some of the ideas we talked about in relation to the other question. But you know, instead of what maybe you're interested in doing next in your career, don't make that your last paragraph. Move it up to the very top of your summary. And so, Adina, also, anything else? Yeah, Denise, I also just want to add that um, outdated skills don't have to be listed, right? Um, yes, LinkedIn yes. profile, you don't have to list all of the skills or all of the experiences that you've ever had. Right. Right. Instead, really be focused on your future role. What is the next step that you want to take? Where do yeah. you, you see yourself in the next one to two years, three to five years? Right. Mm -hmm. um, or where do you see yourself in what way applying your Walden degree or upon yeah. graduation? So keep that in mind and think back to those multiple roles that we talked about earlier. Yeah, great. I think we should move on. So Dina, I'm going to hand it back over to you to uh, continue. Thanks, Denise. 
So during the next few minutes, we're going to go over how to build connections and grow your network, join professional groups and become actively involved, find Walden alumni on LinkedIn, search for jobs and follow companies and increase your visibility. So let's start with building connections. Start building your network by searching for people who you would like to connect with. And you can do so by their name, by their job title, or by their company. And these can be professionals you are connected with um, in your current or future field, members of the Walden community, your current or former coworkers, thought leaders in your industry or others. And also, if, if you're considering a career change, you can view the profiles of people who work in your future role. And this can allow you to gain ideas on professional associations you might want to join, um, skills that you might want to highlight on your LinkedIn profile, and experience that may be needed in your future role or in your field. And if you'd like to drill down your search criteria, you can always use the all filters feature to perform a more targeted search. And to expand your network, it is also very important to note that LinkedIn works by degrees of connections. The people you connect with directly those are your first degree connections. The people connected to your first degree connections are called your second degree connections. And people connected to your second degree connections, of course, are your third degree connections. So as you can see from this diagram here, your network will grow exponentially as, you're con as you connect with more and more people. And after finding a person you would like to add to your LinkedIn network, the next step is also to personalize your invitation to connect. In order to do this, the first step is to go to the profile of the person you would like to connect with. And then from their profile, you can click on the connect button to personalize your invitation based on your common interests. So as an example of a personalized LinkedIn invitation, it may sound something like this. Hello, Susan, I am a youth worker and graduate student at Walden University in the MS and Human Services program. I help at-risk youth build self-esteem and leadership skills through physical, academic, and community-based activities. I am looking to connect with you based on your background and experience in developing and leading programs for teens. When building connections, keep in mind to follow basic online etiquette. And this is very important. So for example, when sending a personalized invitation, do not include other people's names in the invite without their permission. And also as you engage on LinkedIn, you will receive requests from others to connect with you. And it is really up to you to decide whether or not you would like to accept an invite or to simply ignore it. Once again, reflect upon your purpose of being on LinkedIn and who you would like to add to your network. So it is perfectly fine to ignore an invitation from someone you're not familiar with or does not serve that purpose for your connections. And along with building individual connections, LinkedIn also has many groups that you can join to network with others. We encourage you to search for professional groups related to your academic program. And to search for groups, enter your criteria into the search box and select groups. So in this example, we used public health. And also, if you belong to a professional association, they probably have a LinkedIn group. 
when you search for particular groups to join, LinkedIn will also automatically recommend related groups as well. We also invite you to join the Walden University Career Planning and Development LinkedIn group. And as a member of our group, you would receive notifications of upcoming events and career advice. And we currently have over 6,000 Walden students and alumni who have joined our group. You can access the group from our website at careercenter.waldenu.edu by clicking on the LinkedIn icon on the left-hand side of the page. But for convenience, we've also included a direct link to the group in your ON24 related content module. So take a moment to join and we will approve your request after today's program. And after joining LinkedIn groups you are interested in, you may also wonder how to best engage in those groups. Some ways that you can provide value to LinkedIn groups are listed here on this slide. And they include introducing yourself and sharing a relevant resource, recommending a book that you've read, posing a question to the group to solicit feedback or announcing an upcoming event. And another great way to utilize LinkedIn is to find connections in on the main Walden University LinkedIn page. First, search for Walden University and then select the Walden University page that has over 200,000 followers. And it's the one with the dark blue square logo. And there is also a link to the Walden University page in your ON24 content module for your convenience if you'd like to follow that page. And once you are following Walden University, click on the alumni tab. And there you can find information about alumni, including their general location, company, position, and studies. You can also reach out to individual alums to connect. Wondering what Walden alumni are doing with their degrees? Review their LinkedIn profiles to get the inside scoop. Next, let's take a look at how to use LinkedIn's jobs feature to locate jobs and other types of experiential opportunities. To access jobs, start by selecting the jobs icon on the top right and then type in keywords for the types of jobs that you're looking for, and LinkedIn will yield results. Now, some examples of common keywords are listed here to help get you started, and they include specialist, researcher, lecturer, manager, analyst, director, and of course, there are many others you can use as well. If you are in a career transition, consider searching for job titles related to your interest area and then reviewing the skills and qualifications needed for the types of positions that you are seeking. LinkedIn is not only a great networking tool, but it is also a great career research tool to help you prepare for your next career move. So along with jobs, you can also research companies or organizations and follow them to stay current on their activities and their trends. To follow companies, search for a company or organization you are interested in, especially those companies that you may want to work for in the future. And you will start receiving updates and announcements from that company. Also consider connecting with people at companies and organizations who work in your future role. By reviewing their profiles, you can gain an idea of, of what knowledge, skills, and experience you will need to build in order to qualify for target positions. So far, we've talked about LinkedIn as a networking tool and as a career research tool. But another important benefit of LinkedIn is that it can help you increase your visibility and build your reputation in your professional community. 
as you advance through your academic program, earn your degree and continue to build your knowledge and expertise, you will have more and more to contribute to others. Post on LinkedIn to share interesting tips, articles, and insights with your network, or write your own article using LinkedIn's self-publishing feature. But always remember to check your spelling and grammar before posting. Use proper citations for articles that you're referencing and bring your best professional self forward. LinkedIn posts and articles you write will reach more and more people as your LinkedIn network continues to expand and grow, helping you strengthen your online reputation and gain more visibility. So to sum up, we'd like to add that social media is all about relationships. It's not about the technology. The technology just makes it easier to connect. It is also more about giving than receiving. So acknowledge others' contributions. Personalize your communications and be thoughtful and relevant every time you interact with your network on LinkedIn. Show that you have a sincere interest in interacting and connecting with others. And if you use this approach, your network will be more responsive and you will build more meaningful connections. Also work actively to take your online networking efforts offline. And there are many great tips on this topic on the career planning and development website. So if you're interested, refer to the resources in your ON24 content module. Now, before I hand it over to Denise to dis discuss privacy settings, LinkedIn premium, and additional career support, are there any questions about engaging on LinkedIn? We do have one question here. Um, and the question is, what are some suggestions for positions that are for people who are new to the industry? What should I be searching for and what can I apply for? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it depends on the industry you're looking at. But typically, um, using keywords like assistant or associate, coordinator, sometimes is a good one. So those kind of entry level type of um, keywords together with, you know, your field, right? Um, so that is a really good as far as start a starting point. But I would also go to the waldenu.edu website. So if you go to waldenu.edu, you can search for your academic program. And for many Walden programs, there are career options or career impact areas or settings that are listed to also help get you started. You can also click on the link for the career planning and development website in your ON24 module. And when you get to the career planning and development website, click on the tab on top that is called career exploration. And this is a great area to start researching careers. We have guides such as what can I do with this major that identify um, areas where you can find employment types of employers and strategies to get your, your foot in the door, uh, career hubs for specialized uh, Walden programs, and a lot more. And there's also now chat GPT. You could ask generative AI tools, uh, like what can you, you, you know, what are some entry level positions in public health, for instance? and they can generate results for you. And we just uh, published today an article on the career planning and development blog on using AI tools for job search and career exploration. 
And Denise, do you have anything else to add? <laughs> no, yeah, that so was many great. Ideas yeah, I think <laughs> for that you know, great it, question. Yeah, if you're not, yeah, not sure. Use the the um, Crack Exploration resources Dina said, and then sometimes, you know, maybe search by some interest areas or join a, a group. Um, and look at some of the other members of the group, look at their profiles. Where did they start their career? Um, you know, that might generate some ideas for you as well. And I would say, um, have a piece of paper or a file on your computer and write down all of the keywords, all of the job titles that you come across um, review job postings and write down the titles of positions that you feel are really good positions to keep searching for so that you have a list of job titles, you have a list of key skills that are needed, and a list of organizations in your area that you want to target when you're ready for that step of job searching. But as Denise said, LinkedIn is just a excellent tool in addition to other tools that can, that can help you uncover information that you need. Thank you both. Uh, that was the only question we have uh, at this juncture. So if you, uh, you can feel free to move on. All right. Perfect. Um, so Denise, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to you. Okay. Thanks, Dina. So next, um, you can manage your account and privacy settings from the settings and privacy selection, selection under your the, the me drop down um, feature, there should be a little uh, tiny uh, picture or like your photo and right under that click on that drop down and, and then you'll be able to manage your privacy settings. So, um, but as with any social media site, you want to consider how much of your information uh, you want to share with the world. Um, one thing we do recommend uh, is to turn off the share profile updates in the visibility section of your settings so all of your connections are not notified every time you edit your profile. Um, and then next, um, we often get the question, do I need a premium account? Um, in most cases, the free account is sufficient. Most users don't even fully utilize all of the free features. Um, on this slide, we listed some of the pros and cons of a premium account. Uh, LinkedIn currently offers a free premium account for one month to try it out. Um, so you may want to try it for one month for free, um, especially if you're in an active job search. There are some features that are, are helpful. Um, but if you don't want to continue after the free month, just don't forget to end the premium version or, you, or you'll be uh, charged uh, for the next month. Um, I'll also add that if you're a current or former US military member, uh, LinkedIn has some special offerings that you may want to explore as well. And then uh, next, before addressing um, more of your questions, let's take a quick look at the support that the Career Planning and Development Department offers um, both students and alumni. Uh, you can schedule a 45-minute career advising appointment um, that uh, can be held either uh, via phone or Zoom. Um, some popular topics include career planning, improving your resume and cover letters, job searching, interview coaching, uh, engaging in professional development activities, and of course, related to our session today, building your network, communicating your professional brand, and reviewing your LinkedIn profile. And then to reserve a career advising appointment, go to the career planning and development website and follow the directions on the blue schedule appointment button. So I know probably many of you are thinking maybe you have some you know, unique situations or maybe, you know, as was mentioned, like what terms do I use for a job search? You might wanna schedule an appointment and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a career advisor to kind of further explore those options. And then next, if you enjoyed this program, you may also like to join one of our other events. Um, every month we hold office hour sessions, which are casual drop-in events, where you can submit questions and learn more about our website um, offerings. We also host quarterly career skills programs on some of our most popular career topics, 
Um, you can register for these events from our homepage. Um, if you missed our recent programs, you can watch um, them on demand by registering from our website's homepage as well. And so next, let's open it up for more questions. August, do we, we have any other questions coming in? We did have a question come in um, and this person asked, how can you make LinkedIn work uh, for you when you come from a town of roughly 5,000 people? There's not a lot of high level people that utilize LinkedIn. Oh, that's a great question. That's that's LinkedIn is perfect for that because you can you can expand your your connections globally. You're not restricted to just that you know small community. Certainly, you'd want to connect with with people that you might know in your community, but you can join groups you know that with people globally. As as Dina said, I mean, there's over 200 countries and regions where where you know people are actively on on LinkedIn. So if you belong to a professional association, you know, join that group and then reach out and uh, and reach out to your Walden colleagues. You know, maybe you've worked on a project for one of your courses or some of you are in your doctoral programs. You meet co uh, colleagues and peers at a residency, then connect, connect with them, you know, really explore and, and, and reach out and connect with others. So LinkedIn is, is great. It really allows you to expand beyond that 5,000 member community into really a global community. Um, Dina, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I think those are all great ideas, Denise, and, and um, just getting out there and seeing who is out there. Um, everything has really gone remote these days, right? So um, online networking can be so effective. You can collaborate with people, like Denise said, across the world. You can share your research. You can. Um, emerge as a thought leader in your specific area or field. Um, so you're no longer really limited by geography and LinkedIn is a perfect tool for that. Great, um, there is a question in the queue that's from a little bit earlier, um, but this person asks um, for a recommendation because they've been having difficulty searching for jobs in the psych field that accept bachelor's degrees? What would be your recommendation for their search? Yes, uh, so, uh, you know, I would say, going back to that career exploration tab um, and looking at what can I do with this major for psychology type of fields and also um, using keywords like psychology, right? or entry level psychology, or even some specific positions like case manager or youth worker. Um, those tend to be more entry level type of roles where people get into the psychology field. Um, psychology is so broad, really thinking about what area you're most interested in. Maybe you're interested in applying psychology skills in a business environment, or maybe you're interested in research. So it's really kind of a stepping back and um, assessing your interest and looking at potential career options, and then using those search terms on LinkedIn and job search sites and other resources to be able to um, locate opportunities. And as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, writing down job titles that you're interested in for the types of jobs that you're interested in, making a list of organizations, making a, a list of skills that are needed or any gaps in your skills that you still need to fill while you're a Walden student or upon graduation. Denise, any thoughts? about that um yeah you know with psychology sometimes it can be a little tricky when you search for that term because then you end up with jobs that are requiring licensure mm -hmm. and at the bachelor's level you're not going to have that um so what you want to do just what dina said is expand it and think about you know first like what do you want to do with your bachelor's degree in psychology because then you can come up with some uh, you know, job titles and maybe like human services or as Dina said, case manager. I mean, there would be a lot of things that you could do and maybe make that one-on-one -on -one appointment with us and we'll help you brain, brainstorm kind of how to do that search. It is a little tricky with psychology because 
you, you see that requirement for licensure so often, and, and that can be a little bit discouraging at the bachelor's level. Mm -hmm. But there are many things you can do. I mean, there's, like, as Dina said, it's so broad. There are many things you can do with a degree in psychology. Great. Yes, it's an exciting field because of all mm -hmm. the possibilities. But really, um, I went ahead and put in a link to the career exploration tab, and that is your toolbox um, to explore careers in psychology and other related fields for all of you who are on this webinar here. And as Denise said, if you need that extra support, you can visit the Career Planning and Development website and click on schedule an appointment and schedule a 45 minute appointment via phone or Zoom and we'll work with you and we'll look at your uh, past work history. We'll look at the activities that you've been involved in and um, try to work with you to identify that good fit. All right, um, our next question is, um, this person says their main purpose for LinkedIn is research. Would you recommend that they get a premium account? Yeah, so with the research, um, if you're working um, on Walden related research, right? Um, sometimes you can use LinkedIn um, to find uh, people who would participate in your studies. And you can do that without a premium account just by posting to your network um, that you're looking for participants in a study. Uh, again, it depends on what your study is about. And uh, the Walden Department of uh, Doctoral uh, or research and doctoral services would be the right people to contact with any questions about using LinkedIn for the purpose of research studies. Um, so th that's something I, I, I would add. But yes, we definitely Walden students use LinkedIn to find participants for studies. Denise, do you have anything to add about that? Yeah, just what you said, be very careful and talk to your chairperson and talk to, mm -hmm. you know, the the um, the Center for uh, Research uh, about it before you go off and do anything on your own. And and then if they say, oh, yeah, that's that's great, then you can, you know, decide mm -hmm. if if premium is going to be helpful for you or, or not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and you can join by the month so you can join premium or, or get a premium membership for a, f a few months, but I mean, it, it will cost that first month is free, but then it will cost you. Um, you can, you know, decide if, if those features are going to be helpful for you or not. Yeah. And, you know, some of the, if you're interested in LinkedIn learning is really good in the premium mm -hmm. accounts. Um, I know both of us use that a lot. And also um, you get more insights into companies and into people who have viewed your profile. So there are some advantages, but as Denise mentioned, most students and alumni who we work with, they don't maximize the free version, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So I would say first use the free features of LinkedIn, see if they work for you. And if you want to explore premium, you know, many times they offer a free month and try it out and see how you like it. See if it is useful in what you are trying to do in your career. Our next question says, how would you recommend connecting with a recruiter on LinkedIn? That's a great one. Okay, I, I can <laughs> I can start and Denise, you can add to this as well. So okay. um, finding recruiters is really a great strategy um, to give you kind of that and the inside scoop. So if you um, go to the search function and you can just put in keywords, like recruiter or staffing or um, hiring manager, 
you know, those talent acquisition and other types of terms. And then um, click on people and then you can see all of the recruiters that pop up and then the all filters button that is very very helpful so you can drill down further and then um, after you search for a recruiter you click on people um, and then there's a list of recruiters use all filters and then drill down to your lo location and then you can see um, a list of recruiters there so that's one way to find recruiters on LinkedIn. And Denise, do you have any other ideas for that? Yeah, there is um, an article in the um, on 24 content materials about search, you know, finding recruiters. So I would strongly encourage you, you know, if you're in a job search and you want to connect with recruiters to read that article. Um, so that's, that's very helpful. Um, you can also do a direct search, like let's say Target Corporation, and you're interested in working at Target. So you would search for Target and you'd go to their, you know, their corporate uh, profile, and there should be a, a, a selection there of people, and you can select the people and then in search for recruiters. So that's that's another way to do it. And just, you know, have a playful mindset and just play around, but yeah, searching for recruiters, LinkedIn is definitely really good for that and you can do it. And then you can reach out. Great, and August, do we have any other questions? Yes, we have one more here. Um, it says, would the Career Center help with reformatting our current resume to a CV? Oh, yes. <laughs> CV resume feedback is, I think, our number one topic. Um, and you can always schedule a career advising appointment. We recommend uh, selecting the Zoom option for your appointment. As you're scheduling uh, and completing your reservation form, you can upload your resume or CV, and we can help you with that. And our website has an entire resumes and more tab that has uh, CV and resume custom templates, access to our skills first um, system. We have webinars and uh, information on both resume and CV writing. So absolutely. And that is it in our queue, um, a bunch of great questions. Yeah. Um, and, and, August, one of, I and see, one of our, I see, yeah. Um, I, in the chat, there's just one more. Um, do you have any templates or uh, examples for specific education programs, such as psychology that our bio should resemble? I just wanna mention that um, we don't have specific samples like that because it really varies um, for each individual. But let's say you're interested in um, someone who's a youth coordinator. You can search on LinkedIn for profiles of youth coordinators and then uh, review their profiles. They'll give you ideas of how to structure yours. And of course, Denise and I, we have our profiles. You can always peek at uh, ours or just profiles of le leaders and thought leaders in your industry. That's a great way to look at their profiles and then um, it'll give you a clue how to uh, work on yours. But again, you can always schedule a career advising appointment and um, select networking and we can give you feedback on your LinkedIn profile. Excellent, and I see a thumbs up. <laughs> Someone uh, gave a, a thumbs up for all of this information, which is great. We do have another question in the queue if we have time. Maybe we can make this our last one for the program. Sure. Great. Uh, so this person says, my first job in 10 years, I was working for five companies. Everyone I contacted or paid for um, my resume was unable to handle putting the details of five different jobs or companies during one time period. Would you be able to help can you all help with that effectively? 
Yes, yeah, so we have uh, Skills First has over 500 custom templates and we have uh, custom resume templates that we can coach you on and we can definitely help you um, structure and organize your documents. So please schedule a career advising appointment and we can um, coach you on how to nestle your uh, jobs under the employer and how to best uh, structure your documents. Wonderful. So with that, we would like uh, to invite you to continue working on your LinkedIn profile and networking skills and schedule a career advising appointment. Visit our website, reach out to our team, follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel and read articles and success stories on our blog. And we'd also like to get your feedback on today's program. So please take a moment to complete the short survey in ON24 to let us know how we did and download your certificate of completion for attending this program. And finally, don't forget to download all of the materials in the related content module, including the PowerPoint slides and links with LinkedIn resources and articles that we provided for you. And thank you again for joining us. And also just a huge thank you to everyone who made this program po possible, including um, August Soto, Denise Frankie, and behind the scenes, Kayla Willis. So thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening.